Welcome everyone to TKO Leadership School COVID-19 Safety Lab. In rapid fire, I'd like to introduce our work group who came together to help develop our policy and procedures. And Steve Smith from Experiential Consulting will lead us into this safety training. Uh, Elaine, you wanna take it away? Uh, hello, I'm Elaine Kevney. I'm on the board and I'm the stewardship chair. I'm a crew leader. Uh, for TKO and I'm a re registered nurse, retired registered nurse, so I've been serving as a nurse advisor. Pete Reagan, I'm a, a retired family physician and have been the physician advisor for TKO and an assistant crew leader for the last year or so. Good morning, I'm Guy Hamlin, uh, TKO crew leader and also the SAW program coordinator. Hi, I'm Natalie Ferraro, I'm TKO's engagement coordinator and I manage our trail ambassador program. And I'm Steve Smith from Experiential Consulting, LLC. So this legal notice goes out to advise folks that we developed these policies and procedures specifically for trail keepers of Oregon. And while we are happily sharing them with you as a resource, we uh, expect that you will carefully adapt and adjust these policies and procedures for your organization in the same way that we did for trail keepers of Oregon. There's some more legal information here for you as well. So a little bit more about me. I'm Steve Smith, Experiential Consulting. We're a risk management consulting firm that exclusively works with outdoor programs. Trail Keepers of Oregon has important conservation work to do, but they also value your safety. Uh, we wanna manage risks to people and to the organizations, which is why they asked for my help to create this organizational plan. It's been a real pleasure uh, working with Trail Keepers of Oregon and your amazing volunteers and staff Together, we use the most current information from public health authorities, emerging practices from other conservation uh, core programs and the partners listed here on this slide. And we customized these policies and procedures and the training to uniquely match your programs. Uh, we also value your feedback and your input. And we wanna hear that so that we can continue to make these policies and procedures uh, as effective as they can be. Thank you, Steve Smith. Leading into this consideration of activating our volunteers, we wanted to make good decisions. So we have a, a series of questions that led us to activating our field-based programs. We definitely needed to screen ahead of time our organization, our land manager, and our volunteers in both preparation and um, their health and well-being and obviously to consider all the activities that we'd like to lead into as we activate those volunteers. It's all been informed by our TKO safety policy and procedures for the COVID-19 environment. Look to our website for the most up-to-date manual and that will be your resource as we scan through this short tutorial. We have a specific document referenced on our website that helped inform our decision-making around activating volunteers. It involved creating the policy and procedures that our organization has in place, reviewing the civil authority restrictions by county and by state and federal CDC guidelines and OSHA regulations. Also considering the resources and the preparedness of both the resources of medical uh, support for emergencies, our partner land managers being prepared for us to be activated, and also um, our own, own organization looking at is it socially responsible and essential for us to be activating volunteers, and are we prepared for that? Okay, three activities have been considered to be activated at this time with TKO stewardship programming. These may happen one at a time or all at once at different sites on local, state, and federal lands. Scouting and assessment is our most simple and straightforward activity that we'd like to lead ourselves into. Uh, that would include one to two people, either solo or within household, or two experienced vol volunteers uh, meeting at a trailhead. We will have some very simple tools with us, uh, hands-on loppers to respond to brushing and debris clearing if, if those volunteers were to see anything. And obviously we're, our, our main goal out of this is collecting 
the information necessary to activate small teams to be able to uh, respond to minor and major maintenance issues or some major safety concerns that the land manager might not be aware of. The other activity is trail ambassadors. Like this example at Lateral Falls, here's an ambassador station, nicely tucked away and yet be able to interact with the public. Um, and this would be actually limited to one to two solo volunteer or within household teams. So um, because of the confines of where the trailhead station would be designated, we just didn't want to have two individual volunteers that weren't from the same household. We just felt like to start, this would be the best approach. It would be tabling with very defined uh, roped off with distancing from volunteers to visitors so that they could keep that physical distance um, while still being able to talk and interact with the public. Uh, no roaming or on-trail activities at this time and possibly shorter shifts because if restrooms and things are closed, we don't wanna put our volunteers in a tough spot. Lastly, small teams. So if our scouting goes well and, we've, and we uh, identify needs in minor and major maintenance, that would be the focus. Um, bigger uh, trail enhancement projects and things like that would come, um, but we'd have to uh, consider those a case by case. Um, we would po possibly be working on some limited structure building or uh, a rock structure project that we could do safely, or possibly some saw work um, as necessary. There are additional components of safety that will be added to the manual for saw work activities, but mainly focusing on single buck saw work. So we'd love to go into more detail on what is an experienced volunteer. We wanted to make sure that the participants that we were able to have start in and be activated on the front end of this with these small groups are folks that maybe have a little bit more experience than what we've had in our programs in the past where we are very inclusive and engaging of anyone that would like to try some trail work of teaching them and guiding them through that. Things to consider were the ambassador training or a crew leader training, something of that variety, um, possibly some sort of equivalent experience to 25 plus trail parties, general safety, communication and trail skills, you know, trail maintenance skills. Um, those are all things that we could, a group of individuals from a community that wants to be tapped and engaged and activated, but we would be reviewing all of that eligibility for participation um, as a staff team. So as those events start being put on our calendar, they probably will be under a promotional code. And in order to be able to participate, we'd have a little survey to assess where that group is. And the crew leader and that team's staff team for that place would identify what type of participants we could have at first, just because of the heightened safety concerns and making sure that people went through a training like this safety lab. All those types of people come along and we want them to participate and we wanna be able to assess that uh, case by case, region by region. Training and waivers. The safety lab that you're watching now is an introduction into what our policy and procedures for a COVID-19 environment that manual has. So reference that while you're listening to this lab. We'll have a safety briefing that we will send you the link for and will be available to our website so that we acknowledge that we're not gonna go through a full tailgate safety talk at the trailhead because trailheads are considered a place where there's higher risk because in interaction with the public and one another can happen the most at a a communal place like a trailhead. So we're going to be doing those briefings online via Zoom call and videos to share so that you can watch that. There is a TKO individual waiver form that now is an e-sign document. And so the only thing that we do at the trailhead is do a brief review of safety, acknowledge all the risks, the uh, safety lab and the safety briefings, and verbally check in for service at that point. Health screening, um, you can see two links, CDC self-screen tool and the Apple self-screen tool, each of which are answering a series of questions to find out, are you gonna be able to be fit for service? Have you been exposed to certain elements that would put you at either a higher risk of exposure to COVID-19? And we ask that you take that 24 hours in advance of the event date, 
And when you come to the uh, trailhead, we want you to acknowledge in that checking in for service that you've gone through the ski screening, you recognize the risks that you're taking, and that you accept that uh, risk and uh, through that waiver and through that check-in for service at the trailhead. Before the event, participate in trainings and briefings. So the COVID-19 safety lab, registration and waivers, the weekly safety talk that we'll be hosting and will be recorded, and it includes some project briefing around what you should expect at the event so we don't um, spend too much time at that trailhead space. Your personal protective equipment and personal preparedness, you know, bringing your own hard hat, work gloves, and other PPE. And included in this is a personal hygiene kit, facial covering, also includes sanitizer and keeping your, your hands clean. Although we're trying hard not to share tools, there, there is a process for you to disinfect that tool. And then project briefing. So there's the safety briefing and project brief that will review kind of the general scope of activities for that event coming up so that you feel prepared and we don't have to spend too much time at the trailhead talking through that project or spend a lot of time on the trail asking questions and getting ramped up to go. Projects that we're trying to prioritize are close trails first and um, get after those things because that's one less risk of interaction with the public. During the event, um, there's five different elements that we want you to consider. You've got your personal hygiene kit that you're coming and you're sanitizing your hands regularly, putting on those gloves. During the volunteer service, you're trying hard to cough in your arm, um, not touch any of your nose, eyes, face, as little as possible and obviously disinfecting your hands um, if that were to happen, keeping your space. So making sure that it's plus six feet at all times. We've always explained a 10 foot distance is best. CDC guidelines are saying six feet is minimum and face coverings whenever that uh, chance of uh, within six feet is possible. Also on the walk in and walk out trailhead activities, we're asking for face coverings. Um, the last is tools and equipment cleaning. They will be disinfected thoroughly before and after the event, um, but we ask that you disinfect them every time you plan to turn a tool in or pass it to another person. You disinfect it, set it on the ground, keep your distance and let that other person grab that tool. And lastly, it's a culture thing. I mean, we are practicing a new level of safety and risk. Um, we have a thing called the tough caring contract that basically says, Hey, if you see me or anyone else doing something that's, you know, either unsafe or hurtful, you'd speak up. We all intend to do the same for you. So keep that in mind. We're all in this together um, after the event. Um, obviously, when we get back to the trailhead, we're going to have you disinfect that tool, go back to your vehicle and wash and disinfect your hands with your own hygiene kit. And the last part that's really critical is if you within 14 days after the trail party, or you recognize that maybe you were exposed to a person that was sick before or after the event, please report that into Trail Keepers of Oregon. It is critical for us to be able to participate in contact tracing um, to make sure that people are taken care of. So please do that for us. Lastly, folks, I just wanna give a hearty thank you to our volunteer advisors who have helped craft our policy and procedures. Nurse Elaine, Dr. Pete, and Guy, thank you all for your help editing and iterating on what we could do to activate volunteers. And Steve Smith from Experiential Consulting, thank you so much for your guidance. Um, if anybody has any questions, Nat Ferraro and myself, Steve Kruger, we're here for you. Our emails are there. Um, you can always reach out to one of the crew leaders of a registered event and we'll get that information to us. Thank you, be safe, and we know that there is an essential value to volunteers being activated out on our local, state, and federal lands. So let's get to it. That ends it from everybody on the line. Thank you so much. We'll see you out on the trail soon.